23 Devonport. Welcome if you're joining us online, over in the lounge or at home. Uh, we are going to stand together. We're going to sing and clap and raise our hands and jump around and praise the Lord together as our incredible worship team lead us in worship. Thanks, man. Hey, church. Let's begin by thanking God. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This backbone already sounded good. And I tried with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A backbone. And just when I
section out here. It's fantastic. I was saying to the guys before, we just sung about the walls of Jericho coming down. And I'm believing for walls to come down today in our lives. But it's not a quiet thing. I just, the Bible doesn't say, I'm just trying to think of a version that might say, the walls came down very quietly. And I can't think of a version that says that. I think it would have been a fairly rowdy affair. So I'd encourage us to let a voice of praise rise in our hearts this morning. Thank God with all of your might, with all of your heart, with all of your being. Give him thanks, give him praise. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause your faith. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you.
pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your bread in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. You go. It's your bread. It's your bread.
every need. Let every need come out before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess to me. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we declare you king of our lives. We declare you king of all earth. And Lord God, as king, we take down our walls to you. Just as David declared that walls are coming down, we bring down the walls that we may have put up in our lives, that we may have put up in our marriages, in our friendships, in our workplace, Father God. We bring them down for you and we declare have your way with our lives we declare in jesus name that just as we sung as well that your breath is in our lungs we declare your name being circulated throughout our entire bodies and let it be circulated into our entire lives let everything we touch feel the glory of god let everything we say resound your voice let it be your name that leaves our lips as well, just as we bring it in as well. And we declare it in Jesus' name upon our entire existence. And God, I just thank you that you're a life-giving yeah. God. God, you have come that we can have life and life to the fullest. So God, let's just lift up our praise to God this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us, Lord, that we can step into life and life abundant. God, that you direct our paths, that you give blessings. God, that you guide us through the valleys and on the mountaintops. God, you are so good. You are so, so good to us. And Lord, we just give you praise and thanks this morning as we worship your name, as we praise your name, as we come into reflection of who you are in our lives. Lord, I thank you that you meet us where we're at. I thank you that you're such a good, good Father. In your name. Amen. Let every come bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that He is Lord. Lift up your shout. Let us join. Thank you, Jesus. 
Wow, you are singing incredibly this morning, church. Thank you, band, for leading such an incredible, beautiful presence this morning. So good, hey. Hey, uh, you can grab a seat this morning. Again, I just want to welcome you if you're a guest here this morning. Thank you for joining us. And if you're watching us online and over in the lounge, we'd love you to be connected. So scan the scanner thing and you can find out all sorts of information through there. I think it's QR code, right? QR code. That's awesome. Wonderful. Just a reminder too, there's many different ways that you can give here at church. And I want to say thank you for being such a generous church in honouring God in all your areas and bringing your tithes to Him so we can um, give through bank transfer. You can put cash in the boxes at either entrance on your way out. And um, we're just so grateful for the way you continue to honour Jesus in this house. So I'm going to invite, hello, come on over guys. Chris and Kels. Come on over to the stage, Kelsey. Oh, hang on, hang on. We've got to do a really warm welcome. I can't believe I forgot this. Can we give the most incredible, warm, loving welcome to our guests this morning, Pastors Darren and Beck Chapman? It is, they are the coolest couple in Newcastle. <laughs> And, and beyond. So yeah, we are blessed this morning to have them share. Um, I will introduce and brag on them a bit later, but um, they are here because, Kelsey, what's happening tonight? Tonight, uh, I, hear, I hear that you guys had a fabulous marriage session yesterday. It was amazing. If you were here, just give me a wink <laughs> if you were at the marriage thing. And if you weren't there, you missed out. I like how that's <laughs> almost like a competition about who can wink and who can't wink right then. <laughs> I think great, I had a, a twitch moment. in my eye this morning. That was but... a great moment. <laughs> Excellent. So tonight, we are super excited. We've got an hour and a half with these guys tonight. Um, and so if you are a single person who would like to get married at some stage, or you're thinking about it, or you go, maybe one day, or if you're someone who is dating and you go, how do I do these seasons of my life really well? Mm. Um, then we're going to spend some time. We're going to have some great conversations. Yep. Feel free to bring your questions. We've got like a way to submit them anonymously if you're like, I've got this thing, but I don't know if I want to talk about it. Yeah. We're going to meet here tonight. We're going to have a great time. So also just let us know if you've got any questions. Um, so either see myself or Dan or Sharon. Um, and it's not too late to register. Yes. Yep, that's right. So it'll be good fun. It will be great fun. Very good. I'd really like to go, but I can't because I'm not in that category. So that's okay. It'd be great, Kels. Thank you. you. We also have the book. I'm sure Darren will promote that. But um, the happy, it is awesome. I said at the marriage thing yesterday, I am not a reader. And I devoured this book within a few hours of reading it. It is so good. So if you are married, it doesn't matter how great your marriage is. Can I tell you, there's always room for improvement, right? So we are not a perfect people. So this is awesome. Get a hold of that. That will be available today over in the hall. Or it's Wonderful. on Audible. It is on Audible. And you get to listen to Darren's voice, not only this morning, but oh. also for two hours and one minute on Audible. Wonderful. As he reads <laughs> the book to you. Very so. good. What also, have we got so happening, what's going Christopher? On? Oh, our, our in the you. loop. Oh, uh, me? Okay. Uh, so this week is Connect Week. Yes. Uh, for the, all, of, all of you who are in a Connect group, will probably already know that, but it's probably the last one for the term. Yes, and then you is. guys will um, just get Have a little break. Have a little break or a have a weeks. social hangout and just yes. go bowling or something. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, which is cool. Um, yep. But also coming up um, in Mother's Day, which is a little way away on the, the 12th of May, yep. um, we are going to be doing baby dedications. Yep. So, or child. Or dedications. child dedications. So if you've had a child um, in the little while or you've recently joined us at church yeah. and you haven't dedicated your child, which is basically just um, saying, I want to raise my child in the house of God yeah. to be like Jesus mm. um, and, and raise them as uh, an God-fearing, honouring family, um, and you would like to do that, um, then come and see Pastor Sharon. See me, and we'll get you sorted. Yeah. It'll be awesome. To pray and for we'll, you, and it'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. And one other exciting thing is we have the dates hot off the press for our next Cambodia missions trip this year in October the 17th to the 29th of October. So if you would love to know more about that, uh, application forms will be available this week. So see myself um, and I will get you sorted. And I would love to be taking another incredible team this year. So stay tuned for that. I just got goosebumps. Wonderful, I know. Going so to Cambodia. Oh, Chris. Oh, it's a sign. I don't think so. I don't think 
think so. But Wonderful. it's for someone. It's for someone out there. It's designed for someone. It's designed for someone. <laughs> Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, we're going to celebrate birthdays. Yes. Um, we've got lots of birthdays. Um, none of them are today. So we're going to save our clap to the end. So we've got River West, Brooke Verwimp, Kylie Heppy, um, Bo Halliwell, Isabel Anderson, um, Tanya Short, and Peter Ardell. All Whoa, celebrating birthdays happy this birthday, week. birthday, everyone. Amazing. And we've got two wedding anniversaries this week. Sarah and Jacob Tan and Rhonda and Sparrow Weber. So happy wedding anniversary to you guys. Very cool. That is good. So Wonderful. Cool. So make sure you see those people and love on them and tell them a happy birthday. Buy them a cake or something. So we are going to have a two-minute break now. So this is an opportunity yes. for us to set up and we, we get to hear from Pastor Darren. It's going to be amazing. So, be, so be, very so be very quick. Go to quick. the toilet to the quickly. Toilet. Otherwise, turn to someone who you might not yet know yep. and welcome them or say hello. Wonderful. See you in two minutes. Hey, thank you for watching us online. Here at C3, we believe strongly in the value of making disciples in the form of getting together in small groups. We see that Jesus did it in his way of making disciples and believe we can outwork that even in this online environment. So if this is a regular place for you where you tune in for church, we'd like to invite you into an online connect group that's hosted by this beautiful couple, Ash and Shirley. Hi. We meet on a Tuesday night at about seven o'clock, um, Western, what do you call it, Standard Time? Yep, Eastern yes, Standard Eastern Time. Standard Time. Every, fortnight. every fortnight and anyone is welcome. If you want to get involved, Ash is going to tell you how to do that now. You can reach out to the church through the C3 inbox or reply to the email address, which is on the screen below. Below. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So again, thank you so much for tuning in online. But again, we really want to invite you into this format of making disciples of finding community, finding a place to feel like you fit. And so again, whether it's inboxes through the page or use the email address here at the bottom, reach out to us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can about getting you involved in this beautiful format with these beautiful people <laughs> and that wonderful group that's already in it. Yeah. So you will be more than welcome. So God bless, hope you're doing well and look forward to hearing from you soon. Chatty church that I love so much. We oh see we could be the C3 chatty church. I could add lots of C words, but I won't. Because <laughs> I have foot in mouth. Hey, come on back to your seats. I want to give Pastor Darren the most amount of time this morning. And just as you're getting to your seats now, I want to tell you a little bit about this incredible couple. Uh, they have been married for 25 years. They have four awesome kids. They've got twins oh, in the middle of four. <laughs> that's I always wanted twins. Oh, so slightly jealous, but that's wonderful. Um, and these guys, they are the real deal. I, I've loved hanging with them over this weekend. They're so real. They're so down to earth. And yet they're so full of wisdom. Um, so I would encourage you this morning to give your absolute attention to them. Listen, take notes. They have a real heart for marriages, for families working together. So can we stand as we welcome Pastor Darren to the stage this morning? Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Don't you have the best leaders? Oh, my goodness. You guys are amazing. We, um, we've fallen even more in love. You can take a seat. Thank you so much. We have fallen even more in love with your amazing pastors this weekend. It's, um, it's been so good to hang out with you guys, actually. Hasn't it? I know, right? I, I just love about your pastors how genuine they are, how real they are. 
Isn't it so refreshing to have real people as pastors? <laughs> Love that. You know what I really, I, I really want to honour you for the, the way that you've raised your family. For your champion, uh, the way that you champion marriage, the way that you champion family, um, you truly love people. And um, that is, it's so good. It's, um, it's so great to travel through C3 and see all the different strengths in the, in the pastors across the movement. You guys are really strong. You're amazing leaders. You really are. Your leadership gifting is fantastic. It's so, so powerful. So bless you guys. You're amazing. We love you. Thanks for having us. Um, well, hi. Hi, I'm Darren. This is my beautiful wife, Beck, and uh, we are so honoured to be with you today. Um, we, uh, a little bit about us. We've been married for 26 years next month. Uh, that's pretty awesome. We're pretty happy with that. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been fun. Most of the time, it's really good. And sometimes, anyway, we won't go into that. We have, we have four kids. Uh, we have a 20-year-old boy, twin 18-year-old boys, and a 13-year-old daughter. Please pray for us. Um, we've been pastoring at C3 Victory in Newcastle uh, for just gone 22 years in lots of different capacities. We planted a church in 2002, uh, we became a campus, and then we did all kinds of stuff. We're exec pastors now um, in our new, our new restructure, our new setup. We're loving it. We um, have been helping couples to prepare for marriage for about 15 years, and um, I don't know, about six or seven years ago, we just really felt a call to enter this marriage space to try and bring some life and wisdom to help couples um, with a sense of hope. You know the power of hope? When you feel hopeless uh, and then you get this glimmer of hope that pops into your soul and your spirit, super powerful for your future. Um, and uh, we try to be super practical as well. So practical is uh, hopefully that's been helping you guys yesterday. Um, in uh, 2021, COVID, perfect time to launch a book. Absolutely, let's do that. So I released this book called The Happy Marriage. Um, I wrote it. It's nice and thin, guys. It's only 104 pages so that, so that someone like me, the average Aussie guy like me, could even pick it up. It's not like this massive tome that sits on your, you know, on your coffee table. You, you could probably even get through that. So I wanted to write a book that was long as one I'd like to read. So... There we go. Anyway, they're, they're on sale somewhere. Cool. You can grab one of those if you like. Um, it's a really helpful framework to be able to see your marriage as well. And uh, we talked about that yesterday. Who was at the uh, marriage workshop yesterday? Did you guys have a good time? We had a blast with you guys. Oh, my goodness. It was so fun. Um, if you're on TikTok, firstly, maybe that's not a good idea. Secondly, um, I'm there and... Um, <laughs> For some strange reason, 100,000 people decided to follow me. So uh, you can find me on there. We're just, I, I, I don't, I'm not exactly everybody's cup of tea, right? Um, are, we, are we like PG today? Are we, we're, we're like, kids have gone out. Kids have gone out, great. We'll, uh, we'll step it up to M. Just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Um, on TikTok, I'm not really everyone's cup of tea. Um, people don't like being told about sacrificial love or maintenance sex or stop watching porn, right? People don't like to be told to put down your phone if you want to have an actual relationship with someone sometimes, right? But anyway, people still like, sometimes, like what I've got to say. So I'm, I'm, on, I'm on there and I'm pushing, hopefully, some healthy, good content because someone needs to. Great. All right, today I want to talk about how love works, how real love works in the context of marriage but because we're not just talking about marriage today, we're also talking about love, like love for all relationships, it covers right across the board. So friendships and colleagues at work and your neighbours and your family members, even those weird family members, you try to keep it at arm's length because they're, they're a bit annoying and they hurt you once, right? But before we get into the Word, I do want to focus just for a couple of minutes on God's heart for marriage. Is that Okay. Here we go. Marriage, God's heart for marriage is that marriage is this beautiful invitation to love deeply, to love well, and to learn to love selflessly. Marriage is a microcosm of the gospel of Jesus Christ, where we uh, truly learn to love and surrender and sacrifice for one another. 
Marriage is where we go on deeper journeys of like personal growth, delayed gratification, journeys that aren't super fun sometimes. It's where we learn to not think of ourselves first all the time. Marriage uh, is where we discover the true power of forgiveness, the, the value of vulnerability. Marriage invites us to enjoy God's great gift of sex, which gives us the, the highest human experience of intimacy. Marriage confronts us with our humanness, with our need of grace, our sinful, self-absorbed ways, maybe I'm just talking about myself right now, <laughs> and our neediness and our dysfunction. Marriage confronts us with the choice to love, even when we don't feel loved or we don't feel like it. Or even worse, when you're hurting or offended or bitter or disconnected. Marriage is crazy because we get thrown into this pressure cooker of, of, of the glorious and the mundane and throw in a whole bunch of feelings in there and some love. Joyful moments and, you know, horrible fighting sometimes. But marriage is an incredible gift from God. Tonight at the Singles Night, we're going to talk about how singleness is a gift and marriage is also a gift. Marriage is a gift from God to explore your own heart and to journey with God and your spouse into deeper connection and deeper fulfillment, deeper contentment, and deeper love. So the passage we're going to read today, uh, it's going to be on screen, but if you get your Bible there, you get your phone there, just to flick through to your Bible app of choice and uh, jump over to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm just going to read one verse. We're just going to focus on one verse today. Is that all right? It's Ephesians chapter 5. Why am I in Mark chapter 12? Let's go to the right passage. Open the wrong tab. Here we go. Mark, sorry, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. It says this, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Whoa, like, hang on, Paul, dude, whoa. Walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us? That's, that's big, man. Like, what, what context are you talking about? All of them. Walk in the way of love. And you've probably heard the word, if you've been in church circles for a while, you've probably heard the word agape a few times, thrown in the mix, right? right? Walk around loving others. Walk around with agape love. Walk around in this wonderful, crazy, you know, life, considering other people. Blessing other people. Sacrificing for other people. Not putting these crazy, unattainable conditions on your love. You know what, I, I do that. I realized I do that sometimes. I will expect people to treat me better than I would treat them. I put a condition on my love that I would never reach for somebody else. We, uh, we bought a second dog. I'm not sure it was a great idea. But we bought a second dog. Her name is Daisy. Uh, and when we got her, uh, she was five months old, and um, we got her a little bit late because she has some medical conditions, um, the poor thing. She's got like a, a weird eye that happens when she's tired, and you're like, oh dear, you need to go to bed. <laughs> you're looking very strange today. You need to go to bed. Off to bed now. Um, and she had pneumonia when she was three weeks old, and she can't bark. It's the best. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So she sits at the glass door, the glass sliding door on the back veranda, and she's like this. <laughs> That's how loud it is. It's fantastic. And so we'll stand at the back going, oh, sorry, are you trying to, no, oh, I can't hear you. And people think we've got like double glazed doors and everything. It's just like, no, we just have the best dog in the world. She can't bark. When she was with us for a couple of weeks, uh, she was um, doing her thing in the morning, sitting by the back door and um, barking, 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 still can't hear you, Daisy. And um, she, uh, I don't know, but for some reason, she decided to do some business next to her, right there, on the veranda. Fantastic. 
Good idea. Great idea, Daisy. And then our son may not have realized he thought it would be a good idea to open the door. And as he did, she got so excited that she stepped all in her stuff and then ran through the house. And it's a work day, it's a school day, and at 7 a.m. I'm mopping half the house to get rid of the smell. I'm like, Daisy, I love having two dogs, don't I? So great, Beck. (laughs) It got me thinking that sometimes that's a little bit of what we do in our relationships with others. We don't always walk in the way of love. Daisy wasn't walking in the way of love. (laughs) Sometimes we just trample all of our dysfunctions, all of our hurts, all of our insecurities, all of our fears into the relationships with people that we love. We bring all of our stuff in with us, and sometimes we dump it on people who don't deserve it. Walk in the way of love. Agape love. Walk in the way where I'm not just thinking all about me, but I'm thinking about how to serve and love the other person in front of me. So my question today is, how do we love well? How do we love well in our marriages, in our families, in our church family? How do we love well? If you're writing notes, write this down. Number one, love is connection Focus. We talked all about connection yesterday at the marriage workshop. We loved it. I love uh, Danny Lee Silk's book called Keep Your Love On. Anyone read it? Anyone read it? Good, good, good book, Keep Your Love On. He says that uh, love means moving towards. Love means I'm always moving in the direction of that person. Instead of withdrawing, instead of holding back, Love, he says, love focuses on protecting and maintaining connection. I love it. So what do I mean by connection? We talked about this yesterday. Uh, And if you're married, uh, and you you were there yesterday, we we helped you remember, reflect back to when you were first dating. And you were like really spending far too much time with this person. And your parents were probably a little bit concerned about how much time you spent with that person. You should come home sometimes. Yeah, 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 whatever, mum, whatever, mum. After uh, Beck and I started going out, eight weeks later, she moved to within a three-minute walk from my house. And I'd never had a relationship last longer than two weeks. And so I'm like, oh, boy, this is going to make us or break us. Fortunately, we worked it all out. We had a big fight, but we worked it out. Great. It It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It did, however, allow us to spend even more time together, which I loved. I'm not sure that she appreciated every every day coming home from work to see her boyfriend sitting on the uh, veranda waiting for her. Yeah, I'm sure she really never, ever got tired of that one. Like, we'd spend all of our waking hours together. We'd talk late into the night, sometimes far too late into the night, about everything we wanted to achieve and do in this life and our hopes, our dreams, our fears. Like in the early days of a relationship, connection's really, really high. It's a priority. And over time, the focus on this connection can drop. It can wane as life happens. Other things take over. But you can get it back. In any relationship, you can get that sense of connection back in that relationship. Like when you feel connected in a relationship, everything in that relationship is easier. All of the things are easier if you feel this sense of connection. We say that connection is like oil and things go better with oil. My car runs so much better when there's the right amount of oil. My food cooks better when, I, I think I use far too much oil. The amount of like Spanish olive oil that we go through, you know, like the cult, the, the, the Woolworths $15 one, I'm always buying those. I think we use, I need to drop my oil level a little bit, right? But there's less friction in a relationship when you feel connected. It's, it's awkward when there's friction, right? You're like, you know, you're thinking about someone in your family or even someone in, uh, in the other side of the church right now and you're like, oh, there's a bit of friction there. It's a bit weird. I used to sit with them. I don't sit with them anymore. But maybe you just need to get connected again. 
Maybe you need to like start somewhere, like start shallow. I reckon shallow's got a bad rap over the years. Like, let's embrace the shallow conversations. It's a really good place to start. Don't like live there. Don't live in the shallows. But it's a really great place to start because as you feel connected and accepted, you can go deeper. Connection's important because of four things. We want to feel safe. We want to feel safe to be able to share stuff that's going on inside of us. We want to feel safe to be able to be a little bit vulnerable and know that we're not going to be judged or ridiculed or it's just going to be brushed off. Yeah, whatever. No, I want to feel safe to share what's happening inside of me. We also want to be heard. I want to be, I want my story and my fears and, you know, my day. This is what happened to, my, to me today. I want that to be heard. And then I, I, want to, I want two more things. I want to be known and desired. Isn't it the most incredible thing that God knows us wholly? He knows us completely, and yet He still loves us and desires us. It's incredible. And so connecting creates safety, which enables vulnerability, which leads to intimacy. So walk in the way of love. Love is connection-focused. Love reaches forwards and makes a connection. You know that person in your life where you're waiting for them to reach out to you? That's not love. Love reaches forwards. Jesus came to earth and sacrificed his life. He didn't wait for you to reach for him first. He came for us first. God needed to bridge this incredibly big gap of sin so that we could be restored to him. And God's like, I'm going first. Jesus is like, I'm going down there. He did that through the, the death and resurrection of his son. God is connection focused. That's how love works. If we're walking in the way of agape, we're not just walking around always thinking of ourselves. We're different now. We're focused on connection. Who am I reaching for? And how am I responding when someone's reaching for me? How do you respond when someone reaches for you? Your spouse. An old friend, agape reaches out. Agape restores the connection. Maybe you need to reach out to that friend again and say, hey, let's do coffee. You've got some really good coffee down here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We live in Cardiff in Newcastle. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a good little suburb. It's a big suburb. But we have seven great coffee shops. Uh, five out of the seven. Three out. Three. Three good coffee shops. <laughs> but if the, if the other ones are closed, I'm still okay with going to the other ones. It's okay. It's all right. Maybe you actually need to reach out for your spouse again and say, when are we, when's date night? When are we going to sit down face to face and get better connected? How do we increase our connection? Let's get really, really practical for a moment. Yesterday in the marriage workshop, we talked about starting with connection, right? In the morning, um, I wake up Beck with a coffee, and I just put it beside her bed because she's not a morning person, and I am. working your strengths, people, right? So I put him a coffee beside her bed, and I just tap her on the shoulder and say, hey, it's time to get up. It's time to get up. And then I go about my morning routine, right? And she's got the, she's got the time and the space to, like, stumble around a little bit and wake up in her own time. But I don't start with a problem and I don't start with logistics because it doesn't work, right? A pro a like a logistical conversation first thing in the morning is, um, oh, good morning, wife. Um, you uh, didn't put the dishwasher on properly and you need to find our daughter's school shorts. And if you can drop our son to work by 8.30, that would be wonderful. Good morning. <laughs> no one wants to be woken up like that. And no one wants you to start the day with a problem. You know, like, for goodness sake, can you please put your underpants in the laundry basket, not next to the laundry, you know? Is this anyone's like, there's a few people who are like, that's actually us right now. Dear Lord, has he been to my house? No. Love is focused on protecting and building connection. So we want to start with connecting first. All right, if you're writing notes, write this down. Love, number two, love is inconvenient. Love is 
inconvenient. There are elements of love that are not very convenient. They're not, sometimes they're not very fun. It is not very convenient to share with your spouse that you're hurting. It's not convenient to walk a friend through a grief journey. It's not convenient to forgive that family member and and, and work on a process of repair. A lot of love isn't convenient. But this is one of the elements of a powerful, maturing love. Is that even if I'm not feeling it, I'm still choosing it. Because love isn't all feelings based. Agape isn't feelings based. Yesterday, the marriage workshop, we talked about listening longer than you feel comfortable with. Anybody in your life that just keeps talking and you're like, dear Lord, like uh, your prayer life is increasing because they talk a lot. Dear Lord, please help them to stop talking just for a little while, right? But I've, re- I've learned that if, you know, if Beck's sitting on the bed and we're having a conversation and she's telling me a story that's the long version of the story, you know how that works sometimes? You know, I find that I'm, I, I, I'm all of a sudden in the doorway. And then I'm still listening as I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, right. Huh, no way. I'm leaving the room as she's talking to me. And I'm like, Darren, re-engage, engage. Oh, hey, and then what happened? <laughs> Listen longer than you feel comfortable with. We have these, um, this like conversational endurance. That sometimes if you're tired or, or whatever, you, you, your endurance is a little bit low. You know, you might want to let your spouse know before they start on some long-winded version of the story. But you might not need that sandwich that badly. Maybe you could just refocus on the person in front of you and re-engage in the conversation instead. All right, that's a light example. What else is inconvenient? Forgiveness. I'm talking real forgiveness. Repairing the relationship, going through the process of talking to the person, repairing the friendship, repairing the relationship. Whoa. And sometimes we're so superficial. Like, I texted my mum like in December. I'm like, hey mom, blah, 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 blah. Texted my mom. Normally she's really, really good. Normally she gets back to me really, really quickly. Three days later, haven't heard from her. And I'm like, whatever. Whatever, mom. Good on you. I guess you're not getting back to me, right? I needed you, whatever. And she texts back on the third or fourth day and she's like, oh, so sorry, I had friends over, and blah, 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 they came down from Queensland and stayed, and blah, 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 yeah, I can do that for you, and I'm like, we're good, we're fine, everything's great, no worries, mum. Sometimes with people, I'm like, oh, you've got one more chance, (laughs) and then I'm like, that's a bit conditional, isn't it? Okay, sometimes our relationships go through serious hurt and offence, Sometimes we've got to try and forgive people for genuinely horrible things that have happened to us. And sometimes God calls us to then move and repair that relationship as well. As much as possible, I encourage you to forgive quickly. Forgive quickly. Don't let that root of bitterness get in there. Move towards repair. Another big area of inconvenience that I have learned and And this one is pretty inherent in marriage, and it's also inherent in agape love, and that is sacrifice. Sacrifice is one of the deepest forms of genuine love that you can offer to a person. This willingness to lay something down that you want in order to benefit or bless the other person. It's so easy for us to go, yeah, I do that all the time for my spouse, and they never do it for me. Right? That's, that's not sacrificial thinking either. Where's the limit? Did Jesus put a limit? He's just like, no, 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 just keep walking in the way of love. Just keep, just keep sacrificial living. Just keep sacrificially loving. Sacrificial, like sacrifice is countercultural. You won't hear that from most relationship, ca- you, you know, coaches. Nope. But here it is in the Word of God. This is how the relationships work best. This is how love works when we are willing to sacrifice for other people. 
So the thing is, I don't want a modern marriage. I want a kingdom marriage. But that means doing the work. That means going through those kind of self-reflective zones where I'm realising how much I'm focusing all on me and not on her. But yet sacrifice is normal in marriage. And here's the deal. Here's the thing that you don't want to hear about it. Husbands go first. <laughs> Pastor Sharon's like, yes. <laughs> right? Ephesians 5 verse 25. If you just go scroll down a little bit, move over a little bit. Ephesians 5, same chapter, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives. How? Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Dude, what are you talking about? Yep. Love doesn't mean just getting what you want and therefore I feel good now. That might be a benefit of love, but love means laying down your life to live for the other person, to surrender for the other person, to give to the other person. Tim Keller in his book, The Meaning of Marriage, probably should read that one, right? You, not me, I've read it. Um, he, says, he says mutual sacrifice means mutual fulfillment. He says, both the husband and wife sacrificing for the other bring fulfillment to them. Incredible. Laying down your life to serve and bless the other person. You know why this is hard? Because I'm lazy and self-centered sometimes. And most of the time, I'm just thinking of me. I'm just thinking of what can I get out of this experience? But maturing in our love means we are thinking less of ourselves and more of the other. So love is inconvenient. This is a really fun message, Pastor Darren. Thanks so much. Great. Great. But you know what? If you're prepared to go there, if you're prepared to engage in like healthy conflict and sacrificial love, loving when you're not feeling like it, you're actually going to enjoy much deeper and much healthier relationships and marriages. The last one, here we go, number three. If the band wants to come up, now's your time. Number three, if you're writing notes, write this down. Love is unhurried. Love is unhurried. Love is not in a hurry. Love slows down, takes its time. I'm not trying to you know, just get out the door. Love is not frustrated by small delays. I get frustrated by small delays. I get frustrated by the most minute delay when I'm driving. Seriously, get out of my way. Do you even know how to drive? Anyone ever said that? You probably shouldn't travel with me in the car. Love enjoys time in the presence of the other person. So a small delay is more opportunity to connect. You ever see those Maccas ads in summer? I always get sucked into Maccas when they do their, like the Maccas Monopoly. And then, and then it's summertime and I'm like, well, we're on holidays and all this stuff is happening. Fantastic. Obviously, I'm going to McDonald's. But in the, in the summertime, they have all these ads with like all these young people driving around in old but somehow beautiful looking cars like this lovely old Tirana or some kind of Datsun 120Y that looks brand new somehow, I have no idea. And they're driving into Maccas and then they're just heading off to the beach or, and they're just hanging out. You, you don't see a phone, you don't see like all these kids with their phones out, they're just on the beach sitting on the bonnet of their car, terrible idea by the way, right? And they're just hanging out. They've got all the time in the world. And what they're choosing to do is to slow life down so they can spend time with the people that they love. Love is unhurried. John Mark Comer in his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, you should definitely read that book. He says that his worst moments as a father and as a husband are when he's in a hurry. He says, hurry brings out the worst in us. I totally agree. Hurry cuts like short our moments, our opportunities to spend time and to go deeper and to enjoy people. 
can't enjoy someone if you're always in a hurry. Hurry keeps us shallow as well. But slowing down, slowing down and, and enables us to enjoy deeper fellowship, greater contentment in our relationships, and true connection and closeness with people. You know, one of the best things that you can do with your spouse if you're married is just debrief the day on the lounge every night. Just chat. Sit face to face. Just slow things down. How you doing? How was your day? What happened for you? Are you all right? After the kids are in bed, in fact, ours are pretty much all still awake. Go to bed way after us sometimes. I just like to just grab a beverage of choice, sit in the lounge, just chat. Slow things down so you can engage. You should write this down. Slow down to love well. Slow down to love well. So to walk in the way of love means we focus on connection. We embrace the inconvenient and we purposefully slow down so that we can love really, really well. Today, I would really love if Beck and I would, could pray for you, if you're married today. We would just really love to pray. You don't have to be going through a hard time or a hard season. Like, there's always growth. There's always more. There's always more enjoyment and connection and intimacy that you could have. You don't have to necessarily be praying for something. You might be trying to, I don't know, get a job or get pregnant or whatever, but... Um, that's, that's awesome. But we would just love to pray a blessing, God's blessing over you uh, as a couple. So I'm going to hand it over to the team uh, right now. But we would love it if you would all come to the front, if you're married, because Beck and I would really love to pray for you, just quickly, and see what God might be saying at the same time. Thanks.
It's your prayer. It's your prayer in our lives. Hey, thank you so much for joining us online here at C3 Church Devonport. We hope you enjoyed the service and we look forward to seeing you again next week.